another portfolio to review and this time it's a junior who's trying to break into the industry in London. Then the first case study we did was based on my tips but I ran through that case study and I saw a few different bits which I guess sometimes when you hear an advice from someone you take it you know full heart and you just apply it blindly or you just kind of believe it as it is. Take every single piece of advice you receive from whoever it is myself or any other mentor or coach, internet persona, a big grain of salt. And that's because it has to be fitting and appropriate to the situation, to the region, to the market, to the role you're applying. This case study, as you can see, is for the National Gallery. And one thing I'm gonna note down immediately that is quite lengthy, 36 slides as a PDF. I would advise immediately for Monty, who is the author of this, to create an index. And it's sort of outlined in this slide specifically on the second slide on this portfolio, but I would kind of make it a bit clear. Just say four months, doesn't matter when it started, if it's March or October, that doesn't really, I think, make that much of a difference. You could correct me if I'm wrong. And he's a UX designer, I would even dismiss responsibilities you could just maybe outline that you did research you did that 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 kind of like the skills but it's also clear from this index what you did personally i would never look at this design software because at this point you have to learn a lot of different tools and very easy to learn like in the weekend you can learn the tool so i would even question if it's worth adding this all together or maybe you can add the final slide you know in the end saying hey this is who i am skills kind of like a mini resume or something like that my PDF portfolio would always have a slide which is introductionary a bit and kind of like even my methods and things of that nature so I can preface it for whichever role almost. The actual National Gallery branding looks slightly different than what was envisioned here in this case study. So I would challenge that immediately because I knew already what the look and feel of National Gallery is. but. A call to action here, don't steer away from brand, don't reinvent a wheel, it's already defined for you. It's not, a, UX is not a, like a, you know, artsy creative activity where you need to always reimagine a brand. Go with it. Take, you know, the buttons, active states, interactive states, chances are this website has been tested for accessibility and everything in between. It's gonna make it easier for you, but also make your case study, even if it's conceptual, look much more real life like. And so to begin with, he listed out initial challenges, but it's his personal challenges, basically. I would maybe divorce it a little bit of what your learnings were. You could kind of put it maybe in the end of the actual case study. I would maybe focus on this more of what exactly you did. But again, it's up to you how you want to present as long as it flows. Bold and the key points of what you want to convey just to simplify and clean this up a little bit. And so the challenges are that 70% of visitors come from abroad. How does the gallery cater and adapt to this challenge? changing user or base, very specific, uh, adapting to digital world and engaging modern visitors. So these are almost like a three distinct challenges. Here I would expect you to target someone from abroad who has different flag, let's say. Here I would expect you to target existing users who are, you know, Londoners or UK based. And here is someone like someone who's growing. This is a child basically with pacifier. Anyhow, so it's almost like a three distinct user groups immediately because they could or they could be overlapping. Maybe they share some behavioral hats. This is what I would expect you to cover next. But let's see. So you took I guess the brief, but you could maybe even start this up in the beginning of the actual case study somewhere here in the very beginning. You're challenging it saying that it skips discover and pain points. It's kind of like already has a solution in mind as an app. But I would start the fact that you got this prompt from someone and then you went to look into the actual difficulties and challenges for national galleries, which you've discovered from, let's say, different research bits like secondary research and maybe some interview. It just kind of like the structure of this could be simplified and kind of shortened as well, I think. You know, you don't have to be that extensive. I get it. You want to show what you do. Another bit, which is probably my fault, but these two things is that an app could not be the thing kind of carries on and you almost try to prove it with your case study that an app is not the right thing. It doesn't really matter. The point is here that you shouldn't 
didn't even talk about the app. I get, I get it, you could mention it. And it makes you actually look much more experienced when you mention this specific point. Because your hypothesis here is not that we need an app or we don't need an app. You need to figure out what we're facing right now, given those business goals and challenges, and then figure out how to engage them properly. Maybe it's gonna be a website touch point, an email touch point, a new app, maybe existing app is gonna include something, that type of thing. Again, you went through secondary research, big sample size, very little of the interviews. I would definitely hustle a bit more. And then a field study, which is, I guess, more of ethnography, just shadowing people, which is good. Three studies of an hour each. I don't know if it matters that much, to be honest, how much of it. And this, again, could be simplified a bit. The key to me here would be the high level themes, but you could make them even more stand out as compared to that additional information. And then you did the experience map, but it starts quite late because your users make a decision before they enter the gallery, right? So I would even start earlier, especially if you're saying that you want to target someone from who might be visiting from abroad, like a tourist or someone who is in a new generation. Chances are they're going to find out about National Gallery, what's going on through some sort of means, because experience starts way earlier than you think it does. That's always the case. Even after they're done, let's see, reaches the end of a guide, heads to the gift shop, they exit it, they go probably to a pub to brag a burger, they post it on Instagram, let's say, hey, I just had an amazing time in you know national gallery with a photo of some something whatever art right that's still experience touch points and that's still user and customer experience national gallery would need to care about and you should too to enrich us even more because this is a bit bare to be honest if this is how your experience map looks like it's either very high level and it's very simple journey like just a few things like oh maybe it's a journey of reaches the end of a guide heads to gift shop i would then imagine this phase kind of looking like that because it's just a few steps, maybe 10 steps they take. All those different touch points and interactions do matter because people could arrive, they could wait for a friend, they could go to the counter, look at the brochure, they could maybe ask a question, maybe meet with a friend, then we go together to check in and get a ticket, or maybe we use their existing app to show the ticket, then we go through the gate, maybe say hello to a person. That's also a touch point. Things of that nature, you could kind of like branch it out a bit more because that's what user experience experience is. It's exactly what they're experiencing in the moment. And I like that you included also the physical maps. Maybe you could actually branch out and add it as another instance separately. Those are very different touch points. Let's say downloadable or the one you pick off, off from a brochure, different interaction points, different origin intent. And then you went into synthesizing affinity mapping bits and bobs. Again, how does it match up with those challenges from the strategy plan is a question mark to be a big one, because again, you're trying to do something about it. Is it per user? Maybe it would make sense also include who are the users who would benefit from this? Is it so general? Because what next come is that you have a theme of sorts that National Gallery is overwhelming and confusing to navigate. For whom? Is it the general again pain point or is it shared for a specific, you know, group of the customers, let's say you would want to attract. So keeping that clear is also important because strategically, you know, you need to focus on tourists, new generation of customers and existing customers. You kind of would want to interview all of them or look for secondary research on all three, capture in individual pain points, maybe even produce different experience maps, things of that nature. If you consolidate it way too early, so what's the point then to come up with, let's say, personas, which you do as a next step, whereas one is, let's say, a tourist, another one is an older generation. And then you do aggregate empathy map. And this is where I'm saying it's kind of like at what point do you actually aggregate those needs? And if you do need to aggregate, I would question if you do. I would almost keep those experiences for a specific user and carry on that theme. And I would also ask you as per usual, why did you do this? Why did you add it to the empathy map in your case study? Or why did you do that in your project? Like, how did you use this information? And so what follows is interesting because you kind of revisit the brief and you're saying that instead of designing an app to navigate easier, you're saying design a digital tool. Users of the National Gallery feel less overwhelmed by its size through digital maps, information and audio guides. And let me show you one thing which sticks out clear and more co cohesive routes, let's say, audio guide and things of that nature, COVID friendly touch points. These are all not really tools, they're service design touch points. So what I would expect you to do is really drop that tool, for example, I would say a suite of experiences or a suite of technologies or design a service to help users of National Gallery feel less 
overwhelmed, yada, yada. If you include so many different things, I would expect you to do that. And then, of course, you give some evidence, which is great. I like that. Of course, you could enrich it further and say this is needed because of, you know, more evidence, interview notes, uh, quotes, things of that nature, kind of to support that even further. Now, what happens next, and which is something which you fall short, is to develop, you jump immediately into ideations and trying to come up with things. Ultimately, you define that you need quite a few different things. I would imagine you doing crazy eights for each of these, how it's going to look like, or coming up with a blueprint, service blueprint of how it could integrate based on the ideas. So let's say the new journey maps would look like this, and this is what it's going to include. And one of the touch points could be an app, and then you're going to ideate and make crazy it for that app of the features you're going to include. And then you introduce the goal and the hypotheses. Again, the introduction of it is usually quite a typical of the case studies, but you can introduce new goals and hypotheses as you discover new things, because you did that discovery and you clear indicate that this is what you did and now you're going to focus on product design because sometimes product designers would start their new case studies at this point after they already have some evidence from previous researchers and then next you did some lo-fi prototype you have some user flows things you considered like app layout linear formatting easily accessible map changing languages quickly who are you focusing on right now who needs this which of those users you're targeting actually need this you need to carry that on and attach you to something. If you made the personas, you have to use them somehow. And I feel like you need to carry on that notion that this is for a specific person or that type of customer. And in the next one, it's even more present because you're saying that you're gonna do some usability testing, which is great. But the five participants of that age range represent maybe one of those personas you had. It actually represents the Gen Z, I guess, or maybe late millennials, but it's five per participants. You kind of would then want to test those features representative. So maybe at least tell me who from those personas you decide to test now and why did you exclude it the other folk? Maybe it's resources or maybe it's that's the MVP and you're gonna address the other needs later on. Tell me that, that's totally fine. If you're testing, I would want to know what tasks you're actually testing it on, maybe represent visually what the results were. This is quite a qualitative insights of what that represented like. You're just saying, I tested it, and as a result, I need to add search feature and make navigation easier and so forth. Why? That's what's missing. And next one is the updated journey map, but this is what I would want to see before you actually jumped into the app itself, because the app itself is one part of those bigger pieces. I know you're considering here and saying opportunities for future improvement. This is the learnings basically, so you should extract that and save it in the end, but this is what you want to address next, because maybe you didn't have time. Deliver, so you go into the specific design things. Again, this is where you probably need to carry on the actual branding of the National Gallery. And I would strongly advise you to do that. It's just gonna be easier and quicker. And so you can focus on the actual UX value you're gonna deliver. And you did another round of usability study. You added some NPS as well. I feel like the numbers here are too small to actually start scoring it. Probably should start thinking about introducing NPS after you, it's out there basically. You have hundreds of users so you can track accordingly and make changes. Other bits and measures you could look into is SAS score or pure score, things you can actually draw out from your own observations of how users interact based on a task and then add a measure to it. And so you made those changes and updated the flows, the features. Feels a lot. It feels like a lot of steps taken. You need to consolidate it a little bit. In this video review, by the way, I'm going to spend a good maybe 40, 50 minutes going through this. The actual video is going to be chopped up and it's going to be quick end. But in real life, I would never ever spend almost an hour reviewing anyone's portfolio. It would be just a few minutes and I'm just going to say, oh, this looks good or these are the gaps. This is what I want to address in the interview, let's say. Make sure to kind of make it much more succinct. Don't kind of reinvent a wheel or fake things away. People are just going to be able to see that. Make sure to approach this in a different way and kind of improve on in the next project because so far looks good. Just need to tweak a few different bits and you're going to be good. If you like this video, smash that like button. Leave a comment down below what you think about it. And on that note, go and research and design something. What else is there to do?